California, we won a victory on free speech, allowing a sixth grade student to present her report on Harvey Milk, which had been unfairly and unconstitutionally banned by school officials trying to dissuade students from speaking publicly about LGBT issues. Here in Montana, we were able to reverse the city of Bozeman's hiring practice that stripped privacy from job applicants by requiring that they submit username and passwords for social networking sites like Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Here in Mississippi, we filed suit to stop a state-funded abstinence-only program that the Lieutenant Governor openly admitted was designed to use government funds for sectarian purposes. We're here in Washington State. We were a part of the victory for gay and lesbian couples when voters passed a ballot initiative that expanded fundamental rights to men and women who have seen their freedom denied because of who they love. And in California, we're challenging our state's mandatory DNA collection from anyone arrested for a felony, even if they're never even charged or convicted. The ACLU filed a lawsuit against U.S. Customs officials. It's a challenge to their policy of searching and confiscating people's laptops without suspicion of wrongdoing. Here in Florida, we went to the appeals court to defend our earlier victory that ended the state's 30-year ban on adoptions by gay and lesbian families. Here in Oklahoma, we won a critical case that would keep church and state separate. Now, we are currently fighting a piece of state legislation that would include a Ten Commandments monument here at the state capitol building. Here at the Supreme Court, the ACLU won a huge privacy case for Savannah Redding. The court ruled that overzealous school officials violated her constitutional rights when they needlessly strip searched her based on a false rumor that she had ibuprofen in her possession.